how do you characterize what you do and, and how you do it? How do I characterize it? Uh, I paint the plains people, the native, native people, uh, 18th century, 19th century, and um, try to capture little moments in their lives, uh, uh, telling the story of their culture, and uh, try to do it as honestly and accurately as I can. Okay. Were your parents encouraging of your, did they see in you some kind of artistic ability early on? Well, I, I think that they did. They certainly never discouraged me. I, I always drew. I was drawing all the time as a child. Um, I also loved to build model airplanes and I was very creative uh, with my hands. It was, it was just something I did, but along with building airplanes, I, I was drawing constantly, and there never seemed to be uh, really any doubt that someday I'd be an artist. Uh, I think when I was really young, I, I thought perhaps I wanted to fly airplanes, uh-huh. yeah. uh, but, but then I realized that really what I wanted to do was uh, be an artist, so it was just something that was always there. So by 47, you were out. Yes, I, I got out in the, in, uh, the winter of, uh, of uh, 46, uh, just before it turned 47, I think. And then I went to uh, uh, the Chicago University for uh, six months. And, uh, and then in the fall, I think, of uh, 67, I started at the uh, Chicago Academy of Fine Arts. The uh, schools, of course, all the universities at that time and schools were were jammed with uh, with um, men and women going to school on the GI Bill of Rights. And I uh, I wasn't able to get into the to the art school. All their their roster was filled up, and uh, I had met this man named Harold Munstock, who happened to live in our neighborhood. I was living with my my father and and. Uh, my stepmother, and uh, this man, Harold Munstock, was a good friend of, of my dad's and, and became a good friend of mine, and he was an artist, older man, a, a great, great wood, woodworker. He did beautiful wood carving, and he could do just about anything. He loved to hunt and fish, and so we hit it off very well. And so when he when he saw my sketches and my work, the samples and paintings that I was always doing, he was he really liked what I did and he seemed to see potential. So he gave me an introduction to Ruth Van Sickle Ford, who was the woman who owned uh, the Chicago Academy of Art, and she uh, accepted me. She took me in. And if so, if it hadn't been for Harold Munstock, you know, who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was yeah. wondering how that came about, how you yes. got in. and. Uh... And so you, so you studied under, who did you study under while you were there? I don't recall any of the instructors in that school. They had a regular two-year course. You know, they taught layout and they taught lettering and, and everything, you know, a, a, a course in just about everything to give you sort of a well-rounded experience, you know, in advertising art, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And uh, the, the part that I enjoy the most, of course, was the figure painting and figure drawing. So after I completed that two-year course, I went to the American Academy of Art, and I took uh, life drawing in the morning and figure painting in the afternoon, and uh, studied anatomy, and and I did that for six months. And uh, then my GI Bill benefits ran out, so uh, then I got a job as an apprentice uh, in an art studio. Now that... There's a matter of chronology here for me. I was trying to figure this out. You apprenticed with Haddon, Hayden Sunbloom. Haddon Sunbloom. Mm-hmm. And that was right after your six months at the Academy of Art? Uh, yes. Is that what you were talking about? But yes. there was a point in there, I'm wondering about, you sought work in New York City, and this is before you went the final time. That's right? correct. When I, when I left art school, I, I went to New York with a portfolio and thought perhaps I could get a job in New York as an apprentice, but... Uh, the only thing that I could find was with a little studio that I'd never heard of, and um, and I, I I knew that that was not for me. I just I just I just said this isn't going to work. So I turned around after several days and came home, and then again my friend Harold Munstock happened to be a good friend of, of oh, Haddon Sunbloom's. <laughs> yeah, 
And so he wrote, uh, he wrote Sonny a letter, and in fact, I have a copy of that letter, um, which showed up recently. And uh, the letter that Munn wrote to Sunbloom introducing me, hmm. and uh, he put in a good word for me. And so Sonny hired me on the strength of that letter and the strength of my life drawings, my figure drawings. And Sunbloom was the person responsible for the Santa Claus kind of... Santa Claus, Aunt Jemima, Falstaff. He created yeah. a lot of characters. But he also did some great uh, uh, story illustrations, and, and he did the ads for Coca-Cola you know, for years and years. And he was sort of considered the dean of advertising illustrators, I think, at that time. So I learned a great deal from Sonny. I, at, at, at first, uh, I think for the, perhaps the first year, I was the general studio apprentice. I was running errands for everybody and, and uh, building crates and cutting mats and cleaning everybody's pallets and water bowls and sweeping the floor and doing everything. Yeah. And uh, we were expected as apprentices in the studio to also work on, on art samples in between times. If we had a free moment, we were supposed to sit at a drawing board and work on, on pictures, and uh, and I was so busy that I rarely had time to do anything, <laughs> and so then Sonny asked me if I would be his personal apprentice, and of course I jumped at the chance, uh, and so he was going to pay me an additional twenty or thirty dollars a week to be his personal apprentice, and and that was a huge uh, financial help to me. So uh, he eventually had me paint the hands on his figures because he got so bored painting hands. And uh, he did these cashmere bouquet ads with, <laughs> with, with a, a, an embracing young man and woman, and they, the, the, they were surrounded by f flowers. And he had a way of painting these flowers that was phenomenal. They didn't, you couldn't hardly distinguish one flower from another, but, but they all looked like flowers. And he got so that he hated doing that, so he asked me if I'd paint the flowers. Well, there was no, no way I could duplicate Sunbloom's flowers, but I tried. And then he'd go back and he'd, he'd correct them. And, and then he'd have me lay in some of his paintings for Coca-Cola and so forth, which was a great learning experience because I, I had the freedom of doing whatever I wanted within the confines of, of that particular scene, knowing that whatever mistakes I made, he was going to fix them anyway. So I could just go in there and paint and have a great time, and, and uh, it was just a marvelous learning experience. That's great. Great opportunity. Yeah. And you did this for five years with him? I, well, I worked. I was actually an apprentice in the studio for a year and a half altogether. Okay. And then, then they started g giving me uh, illustrations to do assignments. I think the first ones were 24 sheet posters for coffee ads or something, and and um, you know they probably paid four hundred dollars for the ad, and 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 the studio kept I think sixty percent of that or seventy percent, and, and uh, but you know I I started in doing these full color paintings, and uh, of course the clients that came to Sunbloom Studio wanted Sunbloom's type of work, and if they couldn't afford Sunbloom, then there'd be the next man in line and the next man and down to the cheapest one, which was me. And But they still sort of wanted that style. And uh, and that was fine with me. You know, I, I was happy to get the work. But it was just, it was all a learning process. Yeah, yeah. And a great, uh, great experience. So I was there all together for five years. And that was probably from... Uh, up to About, 1952 or so? Well, I, th I think um, my life drawings were dated in 1949 at the American Academy, so probably by 1950 I was at Sunbloom's, and uh, so let's say 1950 to 55, and then from there I went to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and uh, to a studio called John Higgs Studio, 